Martin Kühn will give the first talk. He has been a postdoc at Surfax until well now almost a year ago and has been working on an EU-funded project in one of the excellent centers on solving PDEs for fusion plasma applications. And we have a number of very nice results on uh, fast solvers for the so-called kinetic Poisson equation. Uh, Martin, the stage is yours. Yeah, thank you for the nice introduction. Um, I hope you see my screen and you can hear me. Yes. Yes, OK. Perfectly. Um, OK, perfect. So um, I'm giving a talk today about implicitly extra extrapolated geometric multigrid on disk-like domains for the uh, so-called gyrokinetic Poisson equation. It is an application from fusion plasma applications. And um, this uh, work has been conducted, as uh, Uli Rue just said, uh, during the last year, also together with Carola Kruse from Cerfax. Let me first give you a brief introduction. Um, I will start with some very, very limited words on plasma fusion and introduce the problem that we are considering. And um, then I will only very briefly discuss what discretizations we use for the problem. And um, then, uh, based on the discretiza discretization, we could use already a solver. Uh, which is in our case a geometric multigrid solver, but we will make the detour via an extrapolation approach. And then from extrapolation, we go to the multigrid solver, and then the multigrid solver will again be optimized according to the problem, which is um, a problem described in curvilinear coordinates. So this is just very briefly the outline of the talk. And let me first say just some basic words on plasma fusion. Um, uh, one model for plasma fusion is the tokamak and the tokamak geometry. And one very uh, famous solver in this context is the Gisela solver, which is developed by many uh, solvers. In, in first place, it is uh, the... Um, <clears throat> it is the group among Madame Grangira, and um, it is a coupled solver. So we have one solver, which is um, solving a Poisson-like equation. And from the Poisson-like equation, there is a gyro average, which is computed. There are some derivatives which are computed. And then there is a Boltzmann solver. And from the Boltzmann solver, again, there are, uh, there's the gyro average and there are integrals uh, computed in the phase space. And then again, we obtain a right-hand side for a new time step for the Poisson equation. We again solve the Poisson-like equation and so on and so on. Uh, in today's talk, we will only focus this part, the gyrokinetic Poisson equation, <clears throat> and sh show how some good solvers for this problem could be developed or can be developed. And um, to introduce the problem, we will consider poloidal cross sections. So these cross sections are just cross sections of the tokamak geometry, which was on the previous slide. I will just back. So you have here the tokamak geometry, and this slice is just uh, one poloidal cross section uh, in the tokamak. And this geometry is motivated or is given by the paper of uh, Boussa, Bressa, Grongira, Latu, and Merenberger um, uh, in the paper of targeting realistic geometry in tokamak code. Uh, a simplified mapping, as we all know, is given by polar coordinates. So uh, polar coordinates could be described by a rectangular mesh, which is this one, and then we would have a mapping F and f inverse, which could describe this mapping, uh, except um, uh, one to one, except for this point in the center. Uh, we can extend this mapping. So um, if we just introduce some other two parameters, kappa and delta, with uh, uh, here 0 0.3 and 0 0.2, 
we will map this rectangle not to the circular disk but or not to the annulus but to to this disk like geometry and this is what we will work uh, in the following when we talk about deformed geometries okay the gyrokinetic poisson equation or um what it could be traced back to is uh, more or less a Poisson equation with a coefficient. So we have a density profile alpha, which here is motivated by the works of Erik Sonnendrücker. And then we have this Poisson equation with coefficients on the poloidal cross sections. For the moment, we just have directly boundary conditions here, but we will see that in practice, we can also use other things. And um, the density profile, just to give the plot, looks like this. And um, what's the idea behind this? The idea is that uh, the density drops from about 1 to abo about 0 0.1 in the area where the mesh is refined. So this is just the base. Uh, OK, just back. This is just the base um, of our uh, problem. And um, now we will, or later, we will consider two kind of discretizations. I've put the two discretizations in the annex since I only have 15 minutes. If there are some questions later on, I could come back to that. We will use um, finite difference or finite elements uh, on this mesh, um, the finite elements are um, given by a non-standard <clears throat> discretization. Um, this is due to the extrapolation that we will use in the um, stages later on. But for the moment, let's just think of one given discretization by finite elements or finite differences. So the first questions given by the geometry is um, what do we do with the origin? Since the origin is the node where the mapping is not defined one to one, since there is one line with uh, radius zero, which is mapped to the origin. And of course, um, what could be done there is um, we could uh, use a modified stencil for the finite differences. So we just remove this um, dependencies to the lower left and to the lower right, since here all these nodes are just one node. For the finite elements, of course, we um, just have uh, triangles, even if there are uh, four logical nodes, but there are only three geometrical nodes. And what I would like to introduce here is, is a uh, heuristic, and the heuristic um, I will just denote uh, uh, cross the origin discretization. And what we will do here is we will not explicitly choose the origin node as a mesh node, but we will just uh, choose, for example, R1 equal to 10 to the minus 5 or 10 to the minus 8, so that we are really close to the origin. And then we say, since these nodes are maybe not logically close to each other, but they are uh, geometrically close to each other, we will discretize across the origin by introducing uh, dependence from this node to this node, just due to the geometrical dependence or the, um, um, the, the fact that these nodes are in the geometry very close to each other. And then we can introduce for the resulting discretization a multigrid cycle, which is um, uh, quite standard so far. We will do some pre-smoothing, we will do a cost grid correction, and we will interpolate the correction, and we will compute the corrected approximation. <clears throat> However, this is only the generic description of the multigrid, and now um, you would maybe ask the question, uh, what are the particular smoothers, or how do you do the cost grid correction, and so on. So let me first come to the um, implicit extrapolation. Since um, we will, we we could basically use this concept and introduce a smoother and the cost grid correction. But what we would like to do here is we would also raise the order of our multigrid. So before introducing the smoother, 
or the cost grid correction, let us extend this structure. So we will introduce an implicit, implicit extrapolation step in this multigrid cycle. We will um, have just an extrapolation step between the two finest meshes. And we will uh, uh, let us assume that the coarse nodes and the fine nodes are ordered like this. And then we will use just four third the coarse nodes, uh, stiffness matrix, and subtract a third of the fine nodes, stiffness matrix on the coarse nodes. And we will multiply the fine node uh, stiffness matrix by four thirds uh, on the remaining parts over here. We will do the same with the right hand side. And then we can introduce some um, non standard, we will use non standard finite element integration. And we can then also introduce some non standard integrate transfer operators, which yield a new residual. And the new residual is that given by this, um, um, <clears throat> sorry, given by this uh, integral transfer operator and minus one third, and then we obtain this integral transfer operator times the extrapolated matrix. So then the implicitly extrapolated multigrid uh, cycle, sorry, um, only changes in the smoothing and in the pre-smoothing and in the post-smoothing steps. So we will combine these two levels and we will use one particular uh, integral transfer operator to go from here to here. And then from here on, we will do the standard multigrid. And uh, what is the standard multigrid that we are using? Um, curvy linear coordinates have not been studied very uh, detail, very in detail with uh, polar. Um, sorry, multigrid methods have not have not been studied um, much in detail with curvy linear or polar coordinates, and pointwise smoothers are not sufficient. From Stuben, Trottenberg, Barros, we know that zebra line smoothers were proposed, and. Uh, we can use these circle or radial zebra color, uh, coloring and combine these um, to do um, a circle smoothing in the interior part and the radial smoothing in the outer part. Since the smoothing behavior of the circle smoothing is good in the uh, sorry the circle in the interior and the radial in the outer part. So. Our um, resulting smoothing operator will be circle smoothing in the interior, radial smoothing in the outer part, which remain, which then gives optimal complexity. Um, we will just present now some results for the deformed geometry. We will do 150 iterations. We give a relative, we enforce a relative residual reduction by 10 to the minus eight, and um, uh, we will consider this manufactured solution. This is the solution plotted on the deformed geometry. I will go over this and I will just show you that um, the implicitly extrapolated multigrid for um, R1, so the innermost circle um, as 10 to the minus five or 10 to the minus eight. And we can use either directly boundary conditions or our discretization across the origin. So we have four different discretizations and except for this value here, which differs in the um, uh, sixth uh, order, uh, we always have or we um, completely have the same results. So we have fast convergence. We have an um, convergence uh, order uh, of four almost, which will be four if we have, if we have uh, um, a non-deformed geometry. And uh, also in the infinity norm, we have uh, more than three um, as the order of convergence, and we have almost the same with the finite differences. So <clears throat> to conclude, um, the multigrid of the gyrokinetic for the gyrokinetic Poisson equation needs uh, the introduction of parallel circle radial smoothing since uh, pointwise smoothing is not enough. 
And um, to handle the artif artificial singularity, we need uh, discrete, or we could use the discretization across the origin, which leads to results as good as directly boundary conditions. So we can avoid directly boundary conditions. Um, our density profile and anisotropic grid refinement does not lead to additional difficulties for our multigrid solver. We have still fast convergence for the deformed geometry. Uh, one multigrid cycle still has optimal complexity. We can raise the convergence order up to 3.4 or even 4 if we use non-deformed geometries. And we could also implement a matrix-free uh, version by using the finite differences instead of finite elements with non-standard quadrature. Um, I would like to thank you for your attention. The, um, the funding from the European Union's uh, research is greatly acknowledged. And if you would like to have some further reading, there are two preprints already published on HAL, so you could find them there. Thank you. Are there any questions, or is there someone who would like to take over? Martin, thanks very much uh, for the uh, nice and uh, <laughs> very intense talk. Um, I've been trying to check whether there are any questions or remarks that um i don't Um, I do not see anything on the chat. Ah, okay, there is one question by Niels Kohl. Um, let me uh, translate that here. Um, so, uh, the question by Niels is, what are the typical sizes in, for the production runs? So the number, uh, of degrees of freedom. Yes. OK, uh, so for one slide, uh, we only have up to, um, I think this is um, uh, uh, do, 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 do. Uh, so, so you see see it here for, for one slice, uh, sorry. <laughs> uh, online, the, the calculation just um, dropped. Um, so this is just one slice and um of course if we had uh, this implementation in the gisela solver we would have many of these slices and um they could even go up to millions or billions of uh, nodes on one slice but um i think billions is all already the the maximum maximum since here this is only a 2d surface and we have to solve many of them Okay, uh, thanks, Martin. I see another uh, question by Andy Wall about MG construction. Uh, uh, Andy states correctly that the convergence rates of multigrid are typically better than 0.8. So why is it only 0.8 here? Uh, the 0.8 uh, comes uh, first of all from the introduction of the um, um, <clears throat> sorry of the uh, implicit uh, the extrapolate of the of the implicit extrapolation 
So by introducing this implicit extrapolation, we really gain one order of uh, in the uh, in the con well, sorry we gain one order of convergence, but we pay it with uh, the artifact of um, of a uh, um, theoretical um, um, estimate. So here we have. Uh, Strengthened Cauchy, uh, Cauchy equa uh, sorry, strengthened Cauchy inequality, which introduces um, this 0 0.8. So um, we pay with the um, convergence speed that we gain in convergence order.